can't remember the first poem I wrote because I can't remember when I started writing poems. Um, I must have been about four, five, six when I started playing around with words. And I think I got really serious about poetry probably about the time I discovered boys and I started writing really terrible poems about love. The first inkling I get that I found something that might become a poem is um, very physical. It's not a thought or even an idea, it's a feeling and it's a very, it's like a sort of prickling on the nerves. And it takes me a long time to make sense of it and to think, what, what was it that caught my attention? When you want to write poems, the last thing you should do is sit down at your desk and look at a blank page or a blank screen. You should get on with your life, and you, but what you should learn is to pay attention to the things that bother you, that keep you, wake, you know, the, the things that wake you up in the night. Those are the things you're probably going to write poems about, the things you want to try to make sense of. And once you've got hold of them and found a few words, then you can open out those words and find other words. And that's when you should sit down and do the writing. Sometimes you realise the poem's never going to come good. And I think poets probably throw away much more than they keep. I mean, if you look at my notebooks, there's a lot more crossed out than you can still read because I'm writing to find my way towards what I want to write. I, th I think there'll always be poetry because people will always find it hard to say what they want to say. And that's when people turn to poetry. When somebody dies and somebody's at a loss for words, they might find themselves writing the first poem of their lives. I think the three tips I would give somebody starting out in poetry would be, don't write on the screen, write in a notebook, make it slow and difficult and you need to see what you're crossing out and you need to get the idea of the poem as a physical thing. Read more than you write, read the foreign and the dead. Don't just read poets who, are, who write the kind of poems you write. Um, and and learn, learn what it is that causes tension in you, what it is that keeps you awake, what it is that you're really curious about and pursue it because that's where your poems lie, not in a sunset or a sea, but really in that, at that deep level of yourself. I was lucky because I grew up in a house full of books and there was a lot of poetry on the shelves and so I could just wander along and pull things off and read them without knowing whether this was somebody who was considered good or bad or famous. I, I knew nothing, I just read things. And the poets who meant most to me were the Americans, like Elizabeth Bishop, who writes in a kind of live action way. So she says, oh, it looks like that. No, it doesn't. It looks like that and keeps you right on the edge of the poem happening. I'm going to read a poem called The Spirit of the Staircase, which is about childhood and the spirit of childhood, really, about how children are not afraid of change and of leaving things behind. The Spirit of the Staircase. In our game of flight, halfway down was as near midair as it got, a point of no return we'd fling ourselves at, over and over riding pillows or trays. We were quick to smooth the edge of every step, grinding the carpet to glass on which we'd lose our grip. The new stairs were our new toy, the descent to an odd extension, four new rooms at flood level in a sunken garden, a wing dislocated from a hive. Young bees with soft stripes and borderless nights, we'd so far been squared away in a twin set of bunk beds, so tight knit, my brother and I once woke up finishing a conversation begun in a dream. It had been the simplest exchange, one I'd give much to return to. The greetings of shadows, unsurprised at having met beneath the trees and happy to set off again, alone, back into the dark.